Howdy y'all, it's been a minute since I was on the channel, but I'm back after my shitter of a meat prep series. Um, but I'll try my best to do one every week from now on. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Um, no more grandiose promises on videos, just gonna make them when I can and I have a good idea for one. Um, so coming back with a things I wish I knew when I started lifting, um, kind of a beginner tips, more things that I personally fucked up. Um, so for some context on myself, despite being still pretty young, I'm 19, I'm coming up on six years of like serious powerlifting training, coming up on my eighth meet. Um, so I've got a little bit of competition experience under my belt. I've acquired like a 1950 sleeves total. Um, but along that time, I have made quite a few mistakes. So just sharing things that I wish I had either listened to or received over the course of that journey. So something that I was really egregious with was not building a base and not building good form. So when I say a base, I mean like general GPP. I had very little athletic background. So like any like knowledge of bodily awareness um, or you know muscle, um, I was very focused on like I felt an urgency to progress to like get to like these big numbers. It felt like I was on like a short track time. Um, but when you're like new or young, you have a lot of time to become better. And one of the best things you can do to get there is to spend the time building muscle and building technique. Um, I think uh, there is this feeling that you need to be at a certain point in making hitting these milestones. You go on social media, you see 13 year old benching 405 or whatever, you feel like you suck. Um, but to actually reach those levels and beyond them, you need to like spend the time actually building up muscle and spending, spend up that time building up your technical prowess. Um, there's been multiple times where I've kind of hit a plateau or a wall and I've had to like go back and relearn how to lift a certain like way or like, you know, I would like get away with something for way too long and eventually would be like, well, we now have to backtrack in order to actually correct that because I was so adamant that I like needed to keep progressing and not actually spend the time to build on that. But on the contrary, or the opposite side of that, you also need to not be scared to progress. I think sometimes you can get scared by the boogeyman of never having perfect form, or not having this or that, and so you'll never actually put weight on the bar. And so you do need to be able to actually progress over the course of a block, and you need to be able to fail and learn from it. Obviously you shouldn't be failing lifts and training very often, but you need to be able to like see what doesn't work and does work for yourself, and that requires you know pushing yourself. I think that you can I, the over analysis can be very easy to fall into of, oh, I need to like have perfect squat technique or this or that, um, the perfect diet or X, Y, or Z. And I think just getting into the gym and starting practicing and like progressing, maybe failing, stepping back is also a big point that I think some people have a hard time with. Number two that I think was a big one for me was chasing clout. Um, I got my first like big repost when I was 15 and that was a great feeling. It was you know, a lot of positive attention uh, for an angsty teenager and I wanted to have that over and over. And uh, there was this temptation to always push for these like interesting lifts and get away from building that base um, because I wanted to get another repost. I wanted to be big. I, so it's like maybe I was training less comp specific just so I could inflate my numbers um, opposed to actually spending the time to become a good lifter. Um, my goals personally are associated with becoming the best lifter I could be in 10 years, not uh, short term. And so a big part of that was I need to actually uh, spend time doing the things I want to compete in, not just trying to get attention. It can obviously feel great to get that big repost, get praise from someone that you really, really respect, maybe get a cool follow. Um, but part of that is you can't compromise your training as to become a good lifter in order to uh, chase those things, even if it's very, very tempting. Uh, number three, to go along with that, is only pursuing the things I was good at. It's very easy. Um, I was a very, very good deadlifter when I was 17, uh, or sorry, 16, I pulled 700 pounds, which is very good for that age. Um, and I really kept pushing my deadlift because it was the thing that I was really good at. I like, had a really good time. I was a big Pete Rubish fanboy. I've watched where was 780 for a triple hundreds of times over the course of my lifting career, and I really, really liked deadlifts. And so I put all this focus and energy into it, and then I'd probably I'd, like, skip on my uh, bench, uh, which was my weakest lift. I wouldn't spend the time on the accessories. I didn't really care about form for way too long. And I would like really sink all of my energy into deadlifts because it was the thing that was bringing me attention. It was the thing that I was good at. Um, and I think that made me a worse lifter for a little while because I was just good at deadlifts. And I think my perception was actually better because people were like, whoa, he's got this huge deadlift. But my squat and my bench kind of suffered because I was spending so much training economy and focus into one of the lifts and not actually becoming a better, well-rounded uh, lifter. 
Um, and so I think there is a very easy temptation of getting discouraged for the things you're bad at, and it will in the long term make you a worse lifter. So if, I don't know, squats, you have a really hard time with them. It sucks, it hurts. Instead of obviously, you know, if it hurts, take the time away from it, um, try and figure out the things that you can do. Um, but it's very easy to get discouraged from things um, instead of like, I think the best advice that Sam has given me um, is trying to make the things that you suck at your favorite thing to do. Getting excited for bench press sessions for a long time was very hard for me because I sucked at them. I was very bad for the rest of my, or I felt like I sucked at them um, because I was worse com in comparison to where I was at for the other two major lifts that I compete in. Um, and so I wasn't motivated, and so my bench continued to suffer because I wasn't actually investing the time and energy to become a better bench presser. Um, so it's kind of a chicken and the egg thing where I have to put in the energy to actually be a good bencher, but I wasn't putting in that energy because I wasn't a good bencher. Uh, number four is not being willing to change. Um, if I found something worked for me, I would often stick with it, I would run it into the ground. Where if it was uh, perhaps a split where I thought this is great and I would just run it and run it and run it until I literally couldn't anymore or recovery was suffering and I'd end up wasting months because I wasn't actually changing when I needed to. Um, it's very hard to recognize that when you actually are starting to see success. Um, you really want to just ride that wave, which is good, um, but you really need to be able to recognize and readjust and re-view uh, how your training is going. Um, if something's not working, it's very hard to make those changes because it might have worked for you for a long time. Um, but as you advance as a lifter and as an athlete, um, you need to readjust the things that worked for you or will not always work for you. Um, and in that same vein, I think a lot of people are always looking for that silver bullet, the thing that is going to make them a better lifter. And so a program hop, they'll try and ch change techniques, they'll try and change coaches, they'll change things constantly, they'll change diet. Um, because they're looking for the thing that's going to make them a good lifter, but not sticking to it is the thing that is inhibiting, inhibiting you from becoming the lifter that you want to be. Um, well, obviously you're not going to find the perfect coach off the bat. Learning to stick with a coach and learning what wor works for you, even if it's not optimal off the bat, is what's going to eventually down the line make you a better lifter. So being able to stick with something, figure out if it works for you, but when if, if it doesn't, being able to then discard it, or if it does work for you and it eventually stops working for you, being able to adapt and change. It's very hard, it's like training wisdom, being able to address what is something that's working and what it is not, and being able to make decisions based on that. Number five is not learning until I plateaued. Um, when things were working, I often wouldn't research or look into and become more knowledgeable in the sport. I would consider myself now semi-knowledgeable when it comes to like the very specific uh, aspect of becoming stronger within powerlifting. I think I've learned a decent amount. But for a while, when I was younger, I would not look into things unless I needed to. Where if my deadlift was going well, I wouldn't look into any form or any uh, programming or diet or anything like that. If things were going well, that's all I cared about. And I think the problem is you, I'd be wasting time for when I plateaued, that's when I'd go, okay, I need to readjust my form. I need to start looking into these things. And I'd waste weeks of trialing new things instead of learning as I go. And so when I am forced to make that adaption, I will have more information. Um, I've always seen myself as someone who kind of has as much as they need in terms of like information and research and knowledge, but you always want to be a little bit ahead. So when you face those things, even if you're coached by an athlete, I've had, Sam's coached me for many years, um, but being able to adjust your own training based on your own research, I think will make you a far better athlete in the long term. Alrighty guys, a um, little bit of a short one. I just thought, you know, come back with a good video. I hope you liked it. Uh, like and comment. Alright, talk to you guys soon.